Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Aircraft carriers, destroyers, and other large naval vessels often have to spend months at a time at sea. Though they are specifically designed to carry large amounts of fuel, food, and supplies, these provisions cannot last indefinitely. In order to ensure that these important ships are able to stay on mission, the U.S. Navy has developed a system known as underway replenishment. Often abbreviated as UNREP, this complex and coordinated procedure allows naval fleets to extend their operational endurance and maintain their combat readiness without returning to port. Because it's extremely dangerous for two ships to get too close to one another in the middle of the ocean, the UNREP process is generally done using a heavy line, which is tossed or shot from one ship to the other. Once the line is secure, crew members can begin transporting supplies from one ship to the other while simultaneously offloading trash and other hazardous materials for disposal. Underway replenishment is crucial for maintaining the sustained presence and operational capabilities of naval forces, particularly for long-duration missions far from friendly ports. For this reason, fuel tankers use the same process for moving jet fuel to aircraft carriers, most of which operate on nuclear power. Well released. Well released, guys. Due to the volatility of these substances, refueling UNREP is considered a very delicate process. First, the hoses must be sent across the line and attached to the carrier's reverse tanks. This process is often slow, and the ocean can be very unforgiving at times. Therefore, safety is of the utmost importance to crews aboard both vessels. Replenishment ships are specifically designed for these sorts of resupply operations. During connected replenishment, the ships maintain a steady course and speed while physically connected by tensioned wires and transfer lines. Supplies are then passed between ships using cargo rigs and span wires. Again, this requires precise timing and coordination between the two vessels involved, as the ships must maintain a consistent distance and speed despite wind, waves, and other external factors. Military vessels are far from the only ships that can spend months at a time at sea.
commercial transport ships, such as cargo vessels and tankers, often need to make long journeys through multiple ports. And while their crews are generally only a fraction of the size of what's found on the average aircraft carrier, these vessels still require supplies, like oil, food, and dry bulk commodities. When it comes to ship-to-ship -ship transfers of this nature, commercial vessels have a slightly different approach. The receiving ship will deploy special floating fenders to prevent the holes from making direct contact. This requires extensive precaution, as even these fenders cannot entirely eliminate the risk of contact. And since safety is paramount in ship-to-ship -ship transfer operations, crews from both vessels will perform comprehensive risk assessments and follow strict protocols to prevent accidents, spills, and injuries. Though some ships carry the fenders independently, others must deliver fenders to them from the shore. This can be done by the resupply ship itself or by a third-party vessel. Though there are many different types of fenders, the ones most commonly used during ship-to-ship -ship encounters are made of heavy-duty rubber, which can be inflated via a pneumatic system. These large fenders are then wrapped in several layers of strong tire cord, which provides an extra layer of resistance and increases the overall durability of the fender. Though their design may seem simple, most professionally designed ship-to-ship -ship fenders are specifically intended to distribute load and stress evenly, withstand adverse weather, abrasion, and cutting, and are uniquely suited to marine environments. Ship-to-ship -ship transfers can take place anywhere, but they most often occur not far from shore. This is especially true in cases where neither vessel has fenders on board to facilitate the transfer. They will then reach out to a third-party STS service who will mobilize the necessary equipment and move it into position. This is necessary for several reasons. First, not every port can accommodate large tankers and cargo ships. Second, in some cases, these ships are carrying material or chemicals that have been deemed dangerous or volatile by local authorities. Once the fenders are in place, the vessels involved in the transfer will be securely moored side by side. Some of the largest ships on the water today are liquid natural gas carriers. Liquefied natural gas refers to a gas that has been cooled to extremely low temperatures, converting it into a clear, colorless, and odorless liquid. This process reduces the volume of natural gas by about 600 times, making it much more efficient for storage and transportation. Once it arrives at its destination, it can be vaporized and converted back into a gas for use in generating electricity, heating homes, and as a fuel in various industrial processes. 
As with most types of fuel, the storage and transport of liquid natural gas has significant implications for the environment and those working on board. For this reason, companies dealing in LNG have designed and built specially designed ships to handle the extreme temperatures and conditions required. LNG carriers have large insulated tanks that store the liquefied gas. These tanks are typically made of materials like stainless steel or specialized aluminum alloys. To ensure the LNG does not expand unexpectedly, LNG carriers are equipped with reliquification systems that capture the boil-off gas that naturally forms due to heat transfer. These systems compress and cool the burn-off, turning it back into liquid and returning it to the cargo tanks, thus maintaining the LNG's temperature. Finally, most LNG carriers boast double hulls to minimize the risk of leaks or spills in case of collisions or accidents. Such accidents are most likely to occur during the transfer of the gas, which is why engineers have developed specialized LNG transfer terminals, also known as regasification terminals, Their primary function is to receive LNG from LNG carriers to the terminal storage tanks, typically through the use of cryogenic hoses. There are situations in which one LNG tanker will need to transfer its cargo from one ship to another. This is often achieved via a ship-to-ship -ship process similar to those used for cargo and other forms of fuel. Since many large ships use liquefied natural gas as fuel, tankers can double as both refueling vessels and transport vessels. In fact, the use of LNG as a marine fuel has been gaining popularity in recent years due to its environmental benefits and compliance with stricter emissions regulations. Some vessel types most likely to take advantage of this cleaner burning fuel alternative are ferries, container ships, and bulk carriers. This popularity has led to a dramatic increase in the development of floating LNG terminals. Depending on the specific needs of the area being served, these floating terminals can either be traditional structures or simply large, stationary LNG carriers. Either way, they serve a crucial purpose receiving, storing, and transferring liquid natural gas to any vessel that might need it. Many of these floating terminals are located near busy ports or other infrastructure, where they essentially function as mobile fuel stations. Aside from being more versatile than their land-based counterparts, Floating terminals are also more cost-effective and much safer for the environment. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.